Hello, this is, uh, I want to welcome you to our first segment that we're trying something new here where we're going to take a few uh, weeks and just talk about um, what we're going to call In Conversation with Jeff Thiessen. I think it's important for us to talk about um, certain issues that uh, surround the church or or a Christian culture and it's nice to just have some dialogue about that and so this is intended to be an information and interaction in the sense of talking about relative stuff that maybe or may not affect you. Um, I am a firm believer that the church has been created by God to have an influence in our world and how that looks and how that happens can be very different from one type of church from another and different things like that and but at the heart and soul of it is if the church is not affecting its community um, we have to really wonder why the church exists i i understand that when you um, create services and put things together where where christians are encouraged and blessed and 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 uh, where they encounter things and and their life begins to reflect the things that they're learning but at the end of the day, the question always has to ask is how is it affecting our community? How is it affecting um, our culture? And that's something that's really um, weighs heavy on my heart as a pastor and as someone that's concerned about, you know, the message of Jesus and, and how we um, portray that to uh, our community. I believe our community is um, one of our greatest focuses we have. And so when we talk about how we accomplish that, um, we have to take into account how we interact with people and what our values are and things like that. And so values are important, I get that, and I understand that, And but at the end of the day, we really need to ask the question, what really matters in our society? What really matters in our community? And I think if we take an approach where we start looking at our Christianity through the eyes of Jesus, because I get great inspiration um, through uh, how Jesus demonstrated his life, because when you really look at it, Jesus probably spent over 90% of his time outside the four walls of what we would consider church and the synagogue in that day. Most of Jesus' miracles were always done outside the four walls. And so I, as a pastor, I look at what we do in our community, um, how much of our ministry is designed for people outside the walls. And now don't get me wrong, I believe in discipleship, I believe in training and all those things are important. However, not at the expense of outreaching to our community and making um, our presentation um, exciting and lively where we promote how God values us and how God has got a plan and purpose for us. And too often, I think, many times we can fall into an agenda where we have a specific uh, phrases that we like to use and things and, and, uh, and, and I think sometimes we get lost in that stuff when we get back to the simplicity of the gospel. And for me, the simplicity of the gospel is simply bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. It's not about denominations. It's not about theology. It's not even about our perfect doctrine that sometimes we claim that we have. It's about bringing the kingdom of heaven. And again, we need to go back all the time to see how Jesus demonstrated that and how he cared for people outside of his cultural bubble and how he began to engage people purposely that thought different than him and that often lived different than him and and how Jesus did that is so um, encouraging because I think when you truly love people more than you do your doctrine I think then you have an opportunity to create a platform in which you can share and be able to um, make God's life alive to those around them. And so one of the things that we want to take in these conversations, and we want to talk about some tough issues. We want to talk about some, you know, things that have defined the church and how I think where the church needs to be challenged. And not only that, but to be rethink how they do things, because I think too often we create a culture within a culture and we expect the world culture to understand our culture and fit in with our culture and our understanding of things when the opposite needs to happen in the sense of how do we go to them and show them value and importance. And I think the New Testament is full of examples and ministries of how people went out and begin to give life to people. The very few examples I can think of just off the top of my head as we're talking about that is Jesus spending time with the woman at the well. Culturally, that was unacceptable. That was something that was frowned on. And, and Jesus made his way and a point 
to go see her. And it's interesting, when you look at that passage of scripture, Jesus never pointed out all the wrong things she did. He simply stated that he had something that could transform her life. And when he began to explain it, it transformed her. And uh, even the questions that Jesus asked, go tell your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, yeah, I know you, you, you've had five, but the one you're with right now isn't a husband. It's interesting the tone that Jesus used when you read that in the gospels. He didn't say that in a condescending way or a way that confronted her sin or patterns of choice, but rather it affirmed her honesty. And in spite of the choice she made, Jesus reached into her life and gave him the life that he knew would transform her. In fact, it had such an impact on her that she went back to her village and began to share who this Jesus was and 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 there we had a great move of God in those in that area in Samaria and I think if the church needs to really embrace that type of ministry where we stop using labels of people and we stop looking at what people do and the choices they make and begin to ask for strategy and how we can effectively bring his kingdom to their lives because at the end of the day the thing that transforms people is not my doctrine is not my belief system is not my church or the four walls of the building that i happen to be regularly in but rather the thing that transforms people's lives and we need to understand this it's the kingdom coming alive in them and we got to learn to to stop putting these cliche things and and these expectations on people that don't understand our way of thinking and we have to learn to release those things and begin to pull out the things that God's already put in them because I believe um, they have um, things that God has poured into them and as a result of that we have the privilege to start pulling those things out so I think the church needs to be challenged and and understand and try to under uh, work through the culture that it brings and we need to begin to relook at how we do ministry because oftentimes we can say, well, we're evangelizing. Those words our culture does not understand. But when you talk about building relationship and valuing people, I'm telling you that changes the whole landscape of how we approach people, how we speak to people and how we treat people. And I think we can have a lot to learn when we walk through the New Testament and see how God interacted, not with the religious people, how he reacted with those that were yet to discover what God had available to them. And, and, and that's where my heart is, as we um, strive, and I don't even like the word strive, we purpose to uh, engage people and to love people where they're at because we believe the message of Jesus is so awesome and so incredible that we want to go out of our comfort zones and our bubbles and make the kingdom of heaven alive in our community so hope that makes sense and i'm glad you were spending some time with us and these are just going to be eight nine minutes of just um off the cuff conversations or things that i want to talk about um in, in these next few number of weeks and stuff thanks again for listening and uh look forward to uh, the next time